I'm Megan Gaffey, I'm 24 years old, I'm an uh, addict. And you're homeless, Megan? Yeah, I'm homeless the last year. Tell us a little about that. Um, well, since I've been three years of age, I was in foster care. And then the minute I turned 18, the care system put me into a hostel. They didn't really do anything for me. Uh, I had a daughter and I lost her to cop death, so I ended up turning to drugs. Yeah. So that was hard. Um, what drugs do you take, love? Heroin and crack. Right. And what's your living situation right now? Um, I'm currently in the sleeping bag at the government buildings. And do you want to tell us a little bit about that? What's, like, what's your day like, your typical day? Start from the time you get up, sweetheart. Well, I get up and I go straight down to Grafton Street and I tap from about probably about 12 o'clock till about 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And it's not that easy tapping. Like, those people, like they look their noses down on you to cast every single homeless person as the one. Do you find you it know? humiliating? Oh, very humiliating. Like, it's Tell degrading. Tell about that experience, briefly. Like, even going up to someone and asking them for help and then them turning you down in front of you. And, like, sometimes you get, like, people that, like, talk down to you. And, like, I was up on uh, Camden Street there about two weeks ago and a homeless lad asked this fella for money and he turned around and said to him, you're better off hanging off a rope. Like, people don't understand. Um, like, it's just hard, you know, um, don't even have a tent because my partner's in a bit of trouble at the moment, so I can't really go into a tent, you know, because it's dangerous. Like, after we, what happened in that tunnel, you know, the tent going on fire. Not, Where was this one? Um, at the tunnel down by Dawson Street. Okay. Yeah, drunken people went down and set the tent on fire, so, like, many of us don't like going into tents now in over it? there. Yeah, there was two homeless people in it. Did they get down? No, they died, yeah. Oh my God, when did this happen? Last year. It's horrific. I didn't even hear that. It's, that's terrible. Yeah. It's become so uh, normal to hear people being attacked and all. It's horrible. Exactly, yeah. And how do you, how, you are, you said how old are you are, look? 24. At uh, 24 years of age, what do you do for a living up? Do you have any skills or anything? Um, I just graft, like tap, go around asking people for money. Um, mm. Do you find but, that difficult? Yeah, it's degrading. Like it's hard for the spirits, isn't it? Yeah, like giving up, it puts your confidence down as well. Like when with most people, like you know, when they turn around and give you abuse or you know the way they speak to you and yeah, so you know. What's your dreams in life? To get my children back out of care and I mean, get so out. I have two girls that are alive, and then I had another daughter, but she died there That's two right. years ago. I'm sorry, and it's an awful lot for a young girl of 24 to have been through. Yeah. Have you any family? My mum's dead. My dad's over in prison for a uh, manslaughter. Oh, dear. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in foster care all my life, so like, I don't really have anyone. I'm just by myself, you know. Yes, yeah, so. And what about your boyfriend? He's in the same situation? Yeah, he is, yeah. Like, he's the only one I have at the moment, you know. Does he sleep uh, at government buildings down there? Too? Yeah, he does. And he looks after you? Oh, 100%, yeah. And um, tell me, look, you're one year on the streets now. So yeah. Tell me. And any, would you not go into a hostel? Uh, the council won't help me up here because they said that I have no family connections back down in my hometown. They said they've no funding for B&Bs, so like it's a vicious circle like that. I keep, yeah. I just keep getting thrown from pillar to post. Like, Where's your hometown? Look? At Lone. At Lone, okay. And, uh, so you're not, are you getting any welfare or something? To I pay? am, yeah. Yeah, good. It's almost a bit. But like that goes in two seconds, like it's on B&Bs and everything, like just get us off the street for a night or two and then you have nothing left, you know, but you'd rather, you know, spend it sure. on that, you know. It's just a constant thing, like you're just constantly walking around in circles, like you walk miles a day, just tapping, like trying to get money. And like people don't believe it, but you actually don't make that much. And how did you get on over Christmas, though? Bad. Tell me about that. Tell me about that. Like, um, Christmas Day, we just stayed in the sleeping bag for the day because it was the weather and there was no one was out in the street. Rain. Yeah. Did you manage to get a dinner anywhere? Yeah, the mansion were giving out dinners, but I didn't get one because I was a bit depressed that day. You know? Were you, love? Yeah, were you over my kids. Yourself? Yeah. Of course, at that time. It was the first Christmas that I wasn't. Like, I go to my foster family's house for Christmas dinner and all sure. that. First Christmas I didn't, you know, which and was hard. Me, look, is there anything you can do to change your situation yourself? Going to treatment, but I'm just, I'm not ready. Yeah. 
like I haven't grieved over my daughter properly so like people think oh go into treatment it's not that easy like you have to want to go to treatment you have to want to get better you know and you have a great awareness though of what's wrong and that you mm. need to grieve but yet um, you say you're not ready what's keeping you sweetheart let me ask you straight out what's keeping you what's holding you back I just I think it's because I love the drug too much now because it's blocking out my problems, but it doesn't block them out that long. Let me take it know? from an old drug addict. They, you're not blo you're only putting their problems on ice. They all come back. Mm -hmm. And when you stop using, when you finally get on top of your addiction, you're going to have a huge lot of problems to deal with about your own self. You know, coming to know yeah. yourself. It's a very important part of stopping your addiction. You've got to know yourself, love, and then you've got to look at yourself and see who you are. Yeah. And find a purpose in, in your heart. You know, it's terrible to see a young, good-looking girl there, and you're physically well, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. But here you are on the streets, get wasting away. Mm -hmm. And you could be doing so much in life, love, couldn't you? Yeah. What would you like to do if you had a choice? I'd like to go into social care, like to help children that are coming out, not foster care exactly, but you know, the residential homes that are just they're yes. not getting the help that they need are just being put into hostels and And you could be great at that. You'd have mm. so much uh, experience and so much to be able to uh, give and help. Yeah. I'd love to see you getting that, but you're you're a far place from that right now. Very you gotta far. check it, put your own addiction in check, love, you know that don't you? you know? Yeah. Um, what's the plan for 2022? I'm going to try and get my life together, like me and my partner were thinking of going over to England and just starting again, do you know? Yeah, yeah. Because here, we've no life here, like we're not happy here, do you know? But do you think when you go over there you'll be taking that unhappiness with you if you're taking your addiction? Probably. Probably more than likely, like our problems obviously will be coming over with us. You know, if you could challenge your addiction before you start making big life moves, love, you know? Yeah. You'd have you're right. Some chance, you know? Mm hmm You're right, I though. I know, but, you know, I also know what it's like to be where you're at, chicken man. I am just say, um, what about the services? Are you getting any help externally from the welfare? I know you give the normal doll, but t tell me a little bit about that, just briefly. Um, there's a soup run that comes around. Yes, Liberty um, Soup Run. Yeah. Good friends of mine. They're very, yeah. very good to us. Like, they give us clothes if we need it. You know, toiletries, food, yeah. everything, like you'd never go hungry with them. They're legends, so to speak. Oh, 100% they are, yeah, they're, they're very, very good, right. good and they're very kind hearted as well, like, I you know. know. If you need a chat. That's all people just doing that out of their own back, you know, that yeah. voluntary work. And, uh, yeah, it'd be great to see you doing something like that when you got yourself together, you yeah. know, giving a little back and that, that's what really helps. But, um, let me, you see, just tell me, Brady. Briefly about your addiction, chicken, about the addiction. How long are you strung out the heroin? Um, I'm on the heroin now the last two years since my daughter died. I went straight on to that because yeah. I know I thought it helped me forget and you know, forget about the grief and all that. I was wrong, completely wrong. Sure. Do you know, um, I'm on the crack only the last couple of months, but I'm more on that now than heroin, like it's it's a bad thing. you spend the day living in the Jesus. <laughs> People don't understand you spend a couple of hundred a day on it. They can do, so it's a very Because it's a constant chase for the crack. Yeah. Like with the heroin one bag I do you a, a good few hours like Yeah. You know, but the crack is just constant chase and chase and like People don't understand, they really don't. Oh I do, I tell you. <laughs> I do, you know, and uh, but I also understand love that until we stand up and take it, you know, a stand ourselves, nothing yeah. changes in this Yeah, nothing does you change. Know? Like, there's not enough, like, people think there's loads of help for people with addiction, there actually, there actually isn't. Yeah. There's not that much. What do you want to have a life with? I want to go to treatment, get myself clean, then I want to go to court and get my kids back, and have a good job and get myself back together. And they're have very their reasonable things to, to want. They're not out of the ordinary. They're reasonable yeah. things for a normal person to want and to be able to get. Yeah. Your addiction will hold you back, sweetheart. You understand? A hundred percent, yeah. You're a young girl, you've still got your youth and your health, you know. Don't waste it, squander it all and be another statistic. Mm hmm yeah. Try and save yourself. And okay. Maybe your fellow will come up there with you. And, uh, if he doesn't, you've got to let him go. You've got to move on and save your spirit. You know yeah. Understand? This is crucial where you're at right now. Mm -hmm. You don't become one of those other lost angels in the streets of Dublin. 
exactly. I wish mm. so much the best of all the best Thank of 2022. You. And hopefully uh, some of your, your hopes will become a reality. A little effort from you will happen. Yeah, thanks a million.